Hey everyone, I wanted to share with you a recent announcement from AWS in the CloudWatch service that makes it a lot easier to generate queries to search for specific data that's contained within your log entries. Uh, so for those of you that are already familiar with CloudWatch, it's the logging service for AWS. Well, it does a bunch of other things, but logging is kind of one of the main feature sets for it. Uh, and they added this new feature as part of Logs Insights. And so I wanna show it to you really quick here. And so Log Insights, for those of you that haven't used it before, I'd highly suggest for you to take a look at it. Uh, it lets you search through your different log uh, groups um, and you can use this kind of SQL-like language here. It kind of looks familiar, but it's its own thing. It's not SQL, it's developed by the CloudWatch team. And so uh, how this feature works, if I just show you kind of the vanilla case, is you, show, you select your uh, log group that you want to search through. You can also select up to 50 different log groups, so you can search through all at once. And then you can just run a query here, and you can write your own. And uh, this syntax, because it's a specific language for CloudWatch, I never bothered to learn it in detail but there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And so what I would typically do is I would go over to the query section over here on the right and they have an example section, so sample queries. So I would just look for one that, you know, makes sense for whatever I'm trying to do. So like common queries, uh, number of exceptions logged every five minutes. You can click this button and then you can like modify this. So like if you want to see everything that has exception in it, for example, then you can modify that. Click on run query and there you go. This will return all the data. Um, doesn't look like anything here came out. Let me try to change this to three hours and oh, maybe error. Okay. Sorry. I have some errors here, but nothing is coming up. So Maybe I just, yeah, so there we go. So I just need to change the syntax. So you can see all the different log entries that are popping up here. There's These are some errors for my APIs. Okay, that's not very impressive. But what is impressive is this brand new feature here called the Query Generator. And this new feature is absolutely free to use. And it makes it so that instead of having to go through this kind of nonsense of looking up the syntax, either through examples or through looking through the documentation, you can use natural language processing or natural language descriptions to say what you want the query to be. And AWS will use what I presume is bedrock behind the scenes to generate the corresponding query for you so that you can just say what you want and it'll generate the right thing. So let me show you how this works because it's super, super useful and has already saved me like hours of time in my own day-to-day -day development. And so if we click on query generator here, uh, it asks you for a prompt that you want to describe what you're querying for. So let's do something pretty simple here. So let's say list all entries with the word success in it. And we click on generate new query. Sometimes this takes a couple seconds or so. And then this should change up here. There you go. So fields, message, filter like for success. Okay, we can run this. This should be uh, accurate. There we go. So it shows us some um, data sets here. If we change the look back time, maybe I'll change this to an hour. We won't see this like long horizontal line here. There we go. That's a lot better. Okay, so that's not too impressive. Let's try some more complicated examples. So let's say with the word success or error in it. So we're using an or clause here. Generate a new query. Okay, and it modified it here. So it added the or operator, also included, I think, message here. So we click on run query again, and now it's got errors or successes. So if we look through this, uh, actually, you're not going to be able to see it because of the cutoff. That's fine. Um, we can also do things like uh, seeing the counts per bin. So per like five minute intervals or 10 minute intervals. So let me just grab this one. I have it already saved on the side here, so I don't have to type it all out. And so this one, oops, sorry, that doesn't go there. That goes down here. So list the counts of entries with the word success or error in it and bin the results by 15 minute intervals. So let's try this and see how this works out. Okay, so it's changed the query, it has stats, count now, and by bin 15 minutes. Let's run this to make sure it works and we should get the right results here. So you can see it's not in the graph form here. This is in the table form. So we have bins for 15 minutes now and the counts per 15 minutes. So this one was at uh, 00 to 015. This one's at 15 to 30 and this one's at 30 to I presume 45. And so this is another great example. Let me show you a couple more just to show a little bit more about what's capable. Um, you can also do stuff to see like uh, the longest invocation time for lambdas, which is a pretty common one. So list the top 10 Lambda invocations with the longest invocation time. Let's try that and see what we get. I'm just gonna copy my next one uh, in the meantime here. Okay, and there is the thing. Okay, so we're gonna look for the report. We're gonna soar in duration descending. We're gonna limit this to 10. Okay, it did the top 10, fantastic. We're gonna click on run query here. 
And after a moment, we can see, okay, so 174 milliseconds, that was our longest run for this Lambda function. Um, let's, let's say we want to strip out some of the fields here, like we don't care about timestamp, we don't care about this other stuff. Uh, we have two durations for some reason, let's try that. So I'm gonna modify this slightly, and I'm gonna add on to it, make sure to include just the request ID and duration in the results, and give this a whirl and see what we get. And it made some small changes here. So it's only looking for the request ID and build duration fields. I'm pretty sure everything else stayed the same. Click on run query here and we should get the new result. So there we go, a lot cleaner, a lot easier to look at. So this new query generator feature is absolutely free to use. Very, very useful in my limited experience with it. It's also very accurate as well. Like I haven't run into a problem where it's generated the wrong syntax for me. And in fact, I've actually learned a thing or two about kind of how the syntax works here for CloudWatch uh, Logs Insights. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed and found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.